Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about fighting unorthodox and awkward opponents. In today's video, we're gonna talk about breaking down and strategizing, fighting someone who's unorthodox and very awkward. And again, if you look back at my career, it's usually easier to fight a lot of these guys who are more your classic textbook style of fighter. Jab, cross, hook, kick, very simple to read. But then when I fought someone unorthodox, the Raymond Daniels, it made me a little bit more hesitant because I don't know what to expect. I don't know if the spin kick's coming, the blitzing, and if it's a kick or a punch or a knee. So there were so many variables that made him unorthodox and a little bit awkward. So the video today, we're gonna talk about what is an unorthodox awkward opponent and how to strategize and beat that type of fighter. So when I talk about being unorthodox, the first thing I look at is the footwork. A traditional classic fighter is gonna stay in one stance. Someone who's unorthodox, you might see them playing around with one, distance and range, but two, the way they switch their stances. Sometimes it might be orthodox, southpaw, or maybe in a neutral stance, so it's confusing you. Me as a low kicker, I want that lead leg in front of me, so it's easier for me to continually attack the low leg. But if they're switching stances, moving, and alternating range and stances at all time, it makes me think and have to create different strategies. The second thing an unorthodox fighter will do is the way they move their head and their hands. They're not just gonna keep themselves planted and sitting there for you. They're gonna maybe create distractions, throw, move, faint on different ways. That really makes it confusing. But the most important part of an unorthodox fighter is the fact that they punch and attack on different angles. So you don't really know what shot's coming. Once, when you learn the basic punches, everything is in a straight line, straight path. I always say, when you jab, the other hand is up, turn the punch over, full extension. But someone who's unorthodox doesn't do these types of things. They might punch on angles, their elbows might come up, they might be throwing, switching stances, body all over the place, but that makes them very dangerous, right? It might not look aesthetically pleasing with a clean, sharp, nice technique, but it's very effective to be unorthodox. Every time we practice defensive drills, we're here, one, two, three, four, we're catching punches, but now the shot's coming down, there's an uppercut, there's body, head, spin kicks, kicks on different angles, so it really makes you think. So let's get into the strategies on how to beat this type of fighter. Now, the first thing, as in any type of fight, but even more important, is distance control. You wanna be able to manage the distance. You don't want them to dictate it. Because they're gonna be fainting, moving, switching, you have to understand that distance. And usually what I wanna make sure is that you counter. You don't wanna open up and be first against these types of guys, because one, they might be using distance deceptions, creating attacks that you don't see. So, understand that distance. Be a little bit more hesitant and use the counter. At least this way, after they attack, you can come back, attack again, then move, manage the distance, and stay safe, okay? So strategy one, make sure you manage the distance and use your counter fighting. The second thing you wanna make sure you do is pressure fight. You don't wanna keep that distance. You have to be a confident pressure fighter because you need to stay in that range, but by jamming their attacks, by jamming their movement, you are now starting to dictate the fight. And fighting an awkward opponent isn't about surviving, it's about winning. So, by pressuring, staying inside, you kind of take away their weapons and you can play a range that is effective to you. But just make sure you know how to fight in that head-to-head -head range. Sometimes the unorthodox fighter could be jump knees, you know, they could be good inside. So then you'd wanna do strategy three, which is using the clinch. If I'm pressure fighting and they're still doing some good offense, I need to grab them up, wear them down, and just trying to hold them in, all right? So the pressure leads into my clinch, and that's why for me, Strategy number two and three almost go together because I kind of mix and match between the two. I'll do head-to-head -head pressure, clinch. Attack in the clinch, create some space, box again. So I stay between clinching and pressure fighting and that's the best way to keep them. And the key is like managing where they are in the ring. Watch my fight with Raymond Daniels. I always am lateral tracking him against the ropes. Even though he's moving, trying to create orthodox, trying to spin by constant pressure, clinching, and lateral tracking, you take away their ability to move and attack in that free space, okay? So make sure you play around with it, but if they're good with the knees, you gotta clinch a little bit or manage distance, so it also depends on what the unorthodox is. But these five strategies should be able to play well if you're a fighter that could adapt really 
well play outside, inside, and clinch. Which, if you're watching the channel, learning and developing, and being a full martial artist, you should be able to fight effectively in all the different ranges of martial arts. Now, the fourth strategy to fighting an awkward fighter is using the exit attack. A lot of times it's very difficult to kind of open up and try to throw something because that attacking coming forward allows that unorthodox opponent to hit you. A good example could be uh, Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor. Jose Aldo came in very aggressive, opened up nice and long, and he got caught by that nice counter shot coming in good because Conor McGregor had that good distance control and range. So by entering safely with pressure, clinching, whatever you want. But when I'm inside and I have a hold or I'm fighting head to head, I have connection and touch with my opponent. As soon as they exit, I throw an attack, I hit the legs, I make sure I attack on their exit, okay? I don't wanna fight the fight. I don't wanna say head to head and get into these exchanges. I need to clinch them up, grab, control them. And then as soon as I let them off, attack the legs, come back with my punches and then repeat. So really, if you're a good effective fighter and, and you're fighting Fighting, you know, someone who's moving, angle, spin kicking, you want to put strategies two, three, and four together. You want to pressure, use your clinch, attack with the exit attack, and then maybe repeat between those three, okay? So everything is about closing and managing the range against these types of fighters. Especially if the punch is unorthodox, grab them, tie up their hands. If they're moving well and they're kicking, use that exit attack, chop the leg, so now you take away their movement in a safe, effective, systematic way. Too many times when you're fighting these guys, you're, you're just fighting and attacking from all over the place. Systematically break your opponent down and use these types of enters and clinches. Now, the fifth and final strategy I'm going to talk about is more strike based. When I fight someone unorthodox, I really want to be careful about the head movement and the fainting because their heads might be moving, the legs might be moving, but what doesn't move is the body. And a lot of times I could attack the legs that well. So the fifth strategy I like to use is front kicks and especially using my low kicks. I like the front kick because it doesn't matter what's going on. I can manage my range and distance and keep my opponent away using that nice long front kick. One, it's safe for me because my kicks are longer than my punches. If I try to enter with my punches, I need to be at a little closer range. But a front kick's long, it's safe, I can keep my hands up and still peck away at my opponent. Stay long, use my knee feints, keep them away, and maybe use some skip steps to come in, right? Or using the clinch as as soon as I push them off, I attack the legs. All right? So, more effectively, or maybe body punching, but attacking the body is the key. And just because we are kick fighters and mixed martial artists, using your kicks should be in your arsenal as well as your punches. Okay, so quick review. Use these strategies to close distance. It's all about managing distance. Control their hands so they can't hit you and attack on ways that are safe. The last thing you want to do when you are a pressure fighter, okay? These are the do not do's when you're fighting that awkward person. Do not stay in mid range. Don't sit there, exchange and throw punches. It doesn't end up working. They're unorthodox. Tie them up, clinch them up. Don't go head to head and fight at the same time. You might be punching straight. Next thing you know, they throw an uppercut, a knee or a cut down punch and then you're sleeping, okay? So manage the distance, don't fight. You know, don't fight fire with fire. Take your time, block, then counter or clinch up. Use those exit attacks, all right? Manage distance and make sure whatever you do, stay, try to stay off the ropes and let them control the distance. You dictate the pace, you control the ring, and you win this fight. Do not survive the fight, win the fight. All right, so make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Hit the notification bell to keep up to date. And I appreciate all the support and the comments everyone has been leaving. Also, make sure you check out the video sponsor, Hayabusa, and check the link below, hayabusafight.com. The T3 boxing gloves, the black and gold, are my personal favorite. And also a new channel sponsor, we have Perfect Sports Nutrition, and you can check the link below to get 20% off if you use the code bazooka20. Okay, and again, if you like any of these gears, bazookashop.com to get your bazooka merchandise and join the squad. We'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.